Hello, my name is Stefan and this is Cramp Rate Tactics devlog number one. So today I'll be talking more about core gameplay and controls of the game and how my vision of it changed throughout the development process. Since the inspiration for the game came from online RPGs, my initial plan was to have 20 player control units on the field at the same time. The controls would be context-based, uh, one click to select a unit and the second click uh, on an enemy to select them as a target, on an ally to go support that ally, and on an empty space to just go move there. Uh, the units would have three different abilities just for all those situations. One to attack, one to support, and one would be triggered manually by the player. Although the development of Crab Rate Tactics is only going on for three months, I had this idea way back many years ago, and I have already prototyped it a couple of times. The first prototype I did uh, was done when I was barely familiar with Unreal, and it clearly showed me two things. Firstly, it became absolutely clear that any number of units more than five is absolutely uncontrollable. Secondly, back then I attempted a mobile game prototype there and the click controls just wouldn't, you know, click. What felt more natural on mobile was drag and drop controls where you select a unit by mouse button down or touch and then you move your cursor and then you release it to confirm the command. There was also a second prototype I made. I used Paper 2D for that and I developed my own ability system because I didn't know Unreal has one already. And finally, this time, uh, although I started developing for real, I didn't start with a fully fleshed out game design document. Instead, I decided to take iterative approach. I already had a concept in my mind, and I wanted to do as little things as possible uh, to come to a first playable and then solve design problems as soon as they start appearing. I started with basic controls, drawing from my previous experience from previous prototypes. And once that was finished, I was faced with the first uh, important design decision, which is abilities. Specifically, I had to decide how the targets for the abilities are selected. At the same time, I also needed to introduce my first enemy and it needed a way to deal damage to players' units. I didn't want to go with contact damage because uh, it didn't really fit the strategic gameplay I envisioned. So I came up with uh, two very basic melee abilities slash and pierce. Also, since I was laying groundwork for all abilities going forward, I have to design a certain number of those and just put them on a shelf for now, just to consider them when I was doing certain changes to the system. Now, the melee slash was the easiest of the two, because it was just an AOE instant target detection around the unit. For the piercing, however, uh, it works in the same way, but one thing was different. It needed a direction, it needed a target. To keep things simpler and not bother with uh, actually manually selecting target at the time, I decided to select the closest unit as a target using Unreal's environment query system, which is another awesome tool Unreal has to offer. Funnily enough, this brought me to my first revelation. Targets don't have to be selected by a player. In fact, in this case, it works better without it and units should just select the targets on their own using AI and player would focus on just reacting to the battlefield strategically rather than micro-control each and every action. Come to think of it, that's actually a good advice to any leader or manager out there. And then of course it would be stupid to deny Vampire Survivor's influence at this point. And with that, the most basic element of the gameplay was done and the direction for the further development was set. And also, this is where the list of abilities I prepared earlier came useful because I checked the system against all of them and identified which were the issues to resolve them beforehand. Later on, I showed it to a friend and he suggested another improvement, any hotkeys. So you can select unit with a hotkey and then uh, tap or click to confirm the command. After a little bit of research into Unreal's enhanced input system, I introduced that and this is how the game works right now. In the next couple of videos, I'll talk more about how I made this very basic gameplay more strategic uh, with more enemies and abilities and also how I introduced another layer of challenge with arena event system. And that would be it for today. Thank you for watching and showing interest in the game and I'll see you in the next one.